Strong and Courageous, Enter in the New Normal. That's the name of this brand new series which we're going to begin today. It's a series in the book of Joshua which is found in the Old Testament. And the title of this first message in this series is The Challenge of Change. We're going to be basing ourselves today in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 9. This is what it says. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates rivers in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I used to work in a local primary school. I loved my time there. If it wasn't for the call of God, then I probably would have still been working there. I absolutely loved working in that school. I loved the staff. I loved the children. It was just a fantastic period within my life. And this time of year, summertime and summer term was my favourite term of all. It used to be the exciting term. A lot of things would happen in the summer term in school. I'm sure you can remember the school trips the sports days, you know, the playing rounders outside and all the different sports in the playground all the time. All the tests and all the work being finished with. It was a fantastic time. As a teacher, I used to love it as well. Although I didn't like writing reports, that was the downside to this time of year. But there's also a crucial day as we come towards the end of term. It's a day called transition day or moving up day. This is the day in the school when all the children move to their new class for an afternoon or maybe for the morning, just to find out what their new class will be like ready for September, ready for the new school year. And for the older children who are in year six, they have transition days where they spend two or three days up in the local comprehensive school. Now, I remember my transition days and I was excited for them, but I was also a little bit nervous. I was excited because it was a new season. I felt like I was maturing. I was growing up. It was an exciting time. It was exciting to see a new school, meet new teachers, make maybe new friends. But also for all all those reasons, it was also a frightening time as well. I was nervous. You know, there'd be bigger children there. I wasn't the uh, the oldest child in the school or or one of the oldest children within the school anymore. I was going to be the baby, one of the newest ones in the school. It was a frightening time. And I remember even as I was a teacher, the children, they used to get excited to go for transition day up to the local comprehensive schools. But there were also some children as well. They were afraid. They were afraid of change. Some of them were afraid because they would be losing friends. They'd be leaving friends behind who they'd known all their lives. Some of them were frightened about the work that they would have to face because it was going to be harder tests, harder work. Other children were afraid because of new teachers making new friends or afraid of being bullied and making enemies within the local comprehensive school. It is a difficult time. But then there were other children who would thrive in it. They would look forward to it. They couldn't wait to get into comprehensive school. You know, transitions and change within our lives, we can all react in different ways just like that. Transitions and change are a pretty big deal, especially when they're unexpected or they're unwanted as well. You know, some of us, take transitions and change well, whereas others don't. Just like the children in the primary school in which I used to work in and also the children, my friends in primary school as well, when we went up to transition day, it was a difficult time within many people's lives. And we can always be like that. Some people love change, other people don't love change. 
And the reason why transitions can be difficult and change can be difficult is because we're creatures of comfort. We like routines. We like going through the same old, same old. We like schedules. We like to know what's happening. We like to have rhythm within our lives. And then when our routine gets thrown out of the window, a window, then it's like the whole world has given, has fallen in. It's like everything is ruined within our, line, our lives. Now, I'm sure you would agree that there are some good changes that come into our lives. Things like a promotion within a job, we welcome that type of change. Or a pay rise, we welcome that type of change within our lives. Maybe some of you like the change of, or maybe when you heard some good news that you've got a clean bill of health, that's change that we welcome within our lives. But there's also that not so good category, that not so good change that comes into our lives as well. Things like hearing off the doctor that we've got an illness, things like losing a job or, or maybe not getting the job that we hope for, maybe a change within the family dynamic, change within a relationship. Those are things that are not often welcomed. We can't handle them as much as they are tough. And those unexpected changes within our lives can be very difficult. They're not always easy to handle. You know, I'm so glad that the Bible is not an outdated book, but it's a book that's more relevant than ever. We see it's a story between God and mankind. And there are many examples within the Bible of pe people who went through transition seasons of change within their lives. And one of the greatest examples of this is the book of Joshua. Now, the book of Joshua is found in the Old Testament. And the book of Joshua is a fast paced book. But it's a book about real people like you and me. People who are facing constant change within their lives. At the beginning of this book, the nation's beloved leader, the people of God's beloved leader, his name was Moses. I'm sure you've heard about Moses, maybe through school, maybe through assemblies, maybe through church and kids clubs and Sunday schools. Maybe you've heard about Moses before. And he was the leader of the people of God, the nation of Israel. But the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 1, that Moses had died. He passed on to eternal life. And now came a moment of change within the people of God's history. This was a moment of change. Many of them hadn't experienced the change of a leader within their lifetime. Moses had been their leader for many, many years and now he had died. This was a time of change and it was also a time of uncertainty. Because Moses, Moses had led the people of God following the instruction of God to this new promised land. This place where they were going to live and they were going to dwell. This place where God had promised his people a land flowing with milk and honey. But now Moses was dead. He was dead right as the people were about to enter this promised land. Right on the verge of the promised land. So what does God do in this moment? Well God appoints a new leader. His name is Joshua, hence the name of this book. Joshua was going to be the new leader for the people of God, the people of Israel. And he was going to be the one who would lead the people into this new land, this promised land, this incredible land. Now, we must realise that Joshua, he wasn't given this position because God had ran out of choices. This wasn't like God's second choice or third choice or because there was nobody else but actually, Joshua was somebody who God was preparing for this moment. Joshua knew what it was like to serve the Egyptians. He would have learned obedience and would have learned how to follow the instructions of others during his time in Egypt. Because Joshua was there during, then, during that period. Joshua was also Moses, his assistant. He served under Moses. And we see that God deliberately chose Joshua for this task. This responsibility fell on his shoulders and it was a huge responsibility for Joshua. And we see Moses dies, but God gets straight into, into, the, into moving. He gets right to the point and he moves Joshua into the position of leadership. He begins to speak to Joshua. He begins to give instructions to Joshua about what he's to do in leading the people into the promised land. And he also encourages Joshua. Listen to what it says in Joshua 1 verse 2 to 4 again. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south, 
uh, to the Lebanon Mountains in the north, to the Euphrates River in the east, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. Now, can you imagine being Joshua for a moment? Just imagine being him. Can you imagine carrying that responsibility, that weight of responsibility on your shoulders? You are now the new leader. People had followed Moses. Over a million people had followed Moses for many, many years. And now you're the new kid on the block. And you were expecting all of these people, over a million people, to follow you and to lead you and to lead you into this new and to lead them into this new land. That is an incredible responsibility. Not only was he the nation's new leader, but he had the task of moving over a million people into a new place where they would live. And the Bible tells us there were enemies in this place as well. There were other kingdoms which the people of God would have to destroy in order to occupy and enjoy the land in which God had given them. This was huge responsibility on Joshua's shoulders. You know, if I was Joshua, I'm sure that I would feel excited about this promise that God had given me. But I'd also feel very insecure as well, especially after following somebody like Moses, who was used by God in great and incredible ways. I'm sure Joshua thought, you know, and I'm sure he wondered, you know, am I good enough? Am I really the right man for this job? Will I really measure up? Will I ever measure up to Moses' standards? You know, I'm sure he thought that and I'm sure he was afraid that he would fail. And then on the other side, can you imagine being part of the people of God, the people of Israel, having a new leader, having to move into a promised land where there are enemies, where there is uncertainty, not sure what it's going to look like, the new terrain, the new land, not having a home, being uprooted and constant change within your life. You know, the people of God, they've been waiting for this for many, many years. This was a moment that was a long time coming, but I wonder, were they ready for it? Because you see, the people of God, they had been disobedient to God. They could have entered into the promised land 40 years before, but they had failed God. They had doubted God. And as a result of that, they ended up wandering around in the wilderness for over 40 years and they never entered into the promised land. A whole generation died out and missed out on going to the promised land because of their disobedience. Many times the people of God doubted God, even though God had come through for them on many occasions. For example, in Egypt, they were slaves in Egypt and they doubted, could God ever set them free? Yet out of nowhere, God brought about 10 plagues. Later on, when they are free, Moses leads them to the Red Sea. And now this Red Sea is between them and this new land in which they were entering. On top of that, there was the Pharaoh, the Egyptians were pursuing them and chasing behind them, ready to kill them. And they began to complain against God. They were afraid about what was going to happen. But again, God comes through for his people and he parts the Red Sea. And as a result, the Egyptians, they drown, Pharaoh drowns and God saves his people. Then, not long after that, as they do enter into the wilderness, they're worried about food and they doubt that God could provide for them. But out of nowhere, God provides manna from heaven. He provides a quail for them every single day. Every single day, God feeds them for 40 years in the wilderness. He drops food from the sky. So these were the people who doubted God, but they had seen God do incredible things. So can you imagine being them? They're right on the promise of God, but I'm sure they were afraid. I'm sure they had those doubts again. They couldn't get out of the habit within their lives. And right now, here at the start of the book of Joshua, this is the last step before they enter into the promised land. And now comes the challenge of change. Will they embrace change? Will they enter into the new land? Will they accept their new leader? Will Joshua have the courage to enter into this new land? This part of the journey was the most important part in their history at this moment in time. It was the most important part for Joshua and the people of God. They were called to enter into this promised land, to clear out all enemies and kingdoms. But in order for them to do this, this is the challenge of change they had within their lives. That In order for them to embrace this, they could either go back or stay where they were and miss out on the promise of God. Or they could embrace it. They could have courage trust in God and step into that promised land. If they were going to see live in that promised land and dwell in that promised land, then they would have to trust God throughout the entire process. Joshua 1 verse 7 to 8, God speaks to Joshua and he says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. 
Do not deviate from them, turn in either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Now you might be wondering today, what has this got to do with you and me today? This was great for them. There was a time of change in their lives. But what's this got to do with you and I today? Well, you and I are now entering the post-pandemic world. Our world has forever changed. Yes, COVID cases are still going up and down. Yes, there are new variants that are coming out. There seems to be every other week. But you know, restrictions are beginning to ease. And I pray that one day, very soon, that all these restrictions will go. But you know, the world in which you and I are now living in, the world in which you and I are now going to be entering into is a very different world to that of January 2020, just before the pandemic hit. And many of us, we're longing to go back to normal. Many within our congregation, many of our church, many of you have been saying, you know, I can't wait for normal. I can't wait to get back into the routine and to do the same old things and for things to happen within your own lives and also within the life of our church as well. However, I really believe that this pandemic has drawn a line in the sand. It really is a new world, whether we like it or not. We're heading into a new season, whether we like it or not. I believe it's a new season for every individual. Our lives, our individual lives, our daily lives are going to change forever. But I also believe it's a new season for us as a church as well. It's a new season for us who are Christians, who are followers of Jesus Christ. You know, some of us are hoping, as I said, to slip back into the old ways of doing things, for church to go back to the way it was, to fall back into those routines while ignoring or maybe not realising that God wants to do something new. We're about to enter a new world. Things have changed forever. The way that we minister will change forever. The word hasn't changed. The gospel hasn't changed. The good news hasn't changed. But the way in which we minister, the way in which we reach out, the world has changed forever. And we might be ignoring the fact that God wants to do something new. Some of us are longing and holding back and clinging back to the things of the past where God is saying this is an opportunity to move forward and to do something new. I believe this is a season of new beginnings, a season of new ideas, a season of new strategies, a season of a new way of doing things. That doesn't mean we get rid of the things that God's called us to do, the biblical things, things like worship, things like coming together as a church family in person as well as online. You know, we're not getting rid of these things, but there are going to be changes that happen to us as a church. The way that we live our lives and the way that we witness will have to change the way we share the good news about Jesus. But I believe it is a season of new beginnings, just like it was for Joshua and the people of God. And, you know, just like those transition days for children within schools who are moving up to the new classes and new schools, some who were excited about the future and some who were afraid. Maybe that's how you were feeling today. Maybe your world, your personal world has changed because of COVID and you're frightened about your future. Maybe you're watching this and you're frightened about what's going to come for us as a church and how things are going to look as we move forward as a church because we've seen God do great things in the past and you don't want to quite let that go. Maybe you're afraid of that as we move forward. You know, change happens like that within our lives. These challenges of change, it is the challenge of change to let go of our comforts and the routines and to have faith and courage to embrace what is new and to trust in God. This is the challenge that comes to you and me today. Some of you are excited, some of you are afraid, but the challenge of change comes to you and me today. And So you might say, Luke, how are we going to respond to this as we come to a conclusion of this message? How can we respond to this challenge of change? Well, I believe Joshua shows us as we discover more about Joshua and this incredible journey he goes on in the next couple of weeks. I believe we learn some things first of all. How are we to respond to this challenge of change and as we enter into a new season personally and corporately as well? Well, I believe we to respond, first of all, by looking backward. You might say, what do you mean by that? I mean, we look backward at the faithfulness of our God. I really believe we need to look back to see how God has been with us in the past, how God has helped us in the past. God reminds Joshua of this in verse 5 of Joshua 1. He says, no one will be able to stand against you for as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. I'm sure as Joshua heard those words from the Lord, he thought about how God had provided for Moses, 
how God had been with Moses, how God had delivered Moses and the people, how God had answered prayer. I'm sure Joshua was reminded of that. And that gave Joshua incredible courage for what's to come. And I believe that's the same for you and me as well. Our world might change. Our personal lives might change. But the Bible tells us our God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the faithful God. He is the same God who is able to provide. He is a good God. He is a kind God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. He's the God of salvation. He's the same God. And I want to encourage you to look back at those times of blessing. Look to back at those times of provision. Look back at those times where God has brought you through. You know, when we look back at what Jesus has done for us, that will help us as we begin to move forward. So it begins, first of all, we're to tackle this season by looking backwards, looking backwards. And secondly, we're to move forward courageously, trusting in our God. God, I believe, wants to speak to us today, just like he spoke to Joshua. I believe he, this word is for you. It's for me. It's for us as a church. Joshua 1 verse 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We do not know what the future holds, but we know the one who holds the future. You know, uh, the courage to obey God in the here and now in the present is fueled by reflecting on what God has done in the past. The courage to obey God in the present is fueled by reflecting on what God has done in the past and ultimately what God has done through Jesus. Being reminded that Jesus loved us so much, he died for us, that he has saved us, he rose again, he's alive, that we have eternal life with him. We have a hope and a future in it through him. We can know him personally. He's with us every step of the way, protecting us, fighting for us, providing for us. That is who our God is. And so as we come to a conclusion of this message today, this first message in this series. Are you afraid about this new season that is ahead of you? Personally, are you afraid about the challenges that lie ahead of you? Are you afraid about your future? Are you afraid about this new season for this world, about the changes that are going to come in our world? Are you afraid about the changes that will have to come within our church and that I believe God's leading and sharing with us and guiding us into as a church? Well, if that's the case, I believe that God wants to remind each and every one of us. He's reminding me, he's reminding you to place our trust in him, to have courage and to trust in him. Let's place our trust in God, knowing that he knows what he's doing, that our lives are in his hands. He cares for us, he loves us, and he's got the best for us. I believe that the best days are ahead of us. I believe the Lord wants to encourage us not to stay where we are or to revert backwards or to go back to the way that we're doing things, but to boldly and courageously Step into this new season, step into this new world, step forward into all that God has for us, knowing that our God is with us. I believe that God's best is coming for you. I believe that God has the best for your life. I believe that God's going to move in that area of health within your life. I believe God's going to heal you. I believe that God is able to provide for you, provide for all those who you need. I believe in for God's best for your career. I believe in for God's best for your relationships. I believe in for God's best for our community, Abraham and Abadeh, for Wales. I believe in for God's best for our church. The best days are ahead of us. God has far better ahead of us than what is behind us. And so I believe the word of the Lord to us today is let's be bold, let's be courageous, let's keep trusting in our God, knowing that the best days are ahead of us. And I just want to end by reading this promise. It is the promise that God gave to our church, but I believe it's not only for our church, for what's to come, but I believe it's for you as well, for every individual, for what's to come as well. Haggai 2 verse 9. This temple is going to end up far better than it started out. A glorious beginning, but an even more glorious finish. A place in which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. Decree of God of the angel armies. God gave a glorious beginning, but I believe it's going to be an even more glorious finish for your life and for our church as well. Amen.